Hi, Math 6-5. This is the video for Lesson 38, which is located on page 184 of your textbook. You're going to want to be sure and turn to that page in your textbook right now. So pause the video if you need to and turn to that page if you are not already there. Okay, so we're going to be dealing with number lines, but first we need to review. On our review here, we're going to review mixed numbers. And we need to remember that a mixed number looks like this. One and one half is how you say this mixed number. One and one half. A mixed number is a combination of a whole number and a fraction. Okay, so it's the combination of the whole number and the fraction. If it was just the number one, it would not be a mixed number. It would just be a whole number. If it was just the one half, it would be a fraction. But when you put the two together, it is called a mixed number, okay? So that's review before we jump in to our number lines. Well, I'm gonna be on page 185 and I'm gonna bring the book on screen because that is the best way to draw the number line. The book has it drawn for you and does a very good job of it. So some quick reminders as we go through our number lines. When you are looking, say between zero and one here, at the, I'm at the top of page 185, if you're wondering where I'm at, the top of 185. You, when you are trying to figure out how many pieces it is cut into between zero and one, you count, you can do it one of two ways. You can count the tick marks, but remember you don't count the first number, you start with the first tick. So one, two, three, you count the last number. The other way you can do it is count the sections between. So think about it almost like a hopping thing. You could almost say one section to this tick mark, two sections to that tick mark, and three sections to whole, to the whole number one. So there, it's cut into three sections, or in this case, we would say thirds. If it was a fraction, it would look like one third, okay? I'm hoping you can see as I write in my book. I'm trying not to destroy my book as I write in it, but I want you to be able to see. So one third, each of these are cut into one third. So if we had to look at this number, I mean this letter, excuse me, letter A here, and we have to determine what mixed number letter A is pointing to. Well, first of all, we look at and say, okay, A on our number line, A is between one and two. It hasn't made it quite yet to two. So we know that our whole number of our mixed number is going, it's past one. So our whole number of our mixed number is gonna be a one, okay? Now we have to find out how, we've already determined there's, it's cut into three sections three um, sections between one and two. It's the same as there is between zero and one. We can check one, two, three by counting our tick marks or counting the sections. One, two, three, three sections. That number, so you know you're dealing in thirds. So your fraction, remember your bottom number tells you how many pieces. In between one and two, we have three pieces. Okay, now we just have to figure out out of those three pieces, which one is letter A pointing to? And letter A is pointing to, so if this is piece one, piece two, piece three, it's pointing to piece one, one third out of, there. so it's at one and one third. If it had been here, it would be one and one two thirds, okay? So A is pointing to one and one third. Let's look at B. We know B is between three and four on this number line. It has not made it all the way to four yet. So our whole number, the only whole number we've made it past is three. So in our mixed number, our whole number is gonna be three. Okay, so now we have to determine what it is, the sections it's cut into, how many pieces, 
and we can say it's, to here is one piece, to here is two pieces, to here is three pieces. So it, it, our denominator that tells us how many pieces to cut it into, we know it's cut into three pieces on our fraction. So we have our whole number, now we're working on our fraction piece. So we're at three, and we know it's cut into thirds, so we say one third, two, two thirds. So B is at three and two thirds, okay? So that is how we find which mixed number each one is at. So you find the whole number from zero up to the point to be named, that's the whole number. Then you count the number of sections and that is your denominator, like we said, the three up here, for example. Then you count the number of sections past the whole number, which one, two, and that becomes your numerator. Okay, let's do a couple more of these. Do these examples here in the book together. So point A is between zero and one. We see that, right? So if it's between zero and one, we haven't made it to a whole number yet. So we're not gonna have a whole number. We're just gonna have a fraction. So it's gonna be, it's just a fraction. Um, it's not going to be a mixed number for point A. So when we look at, we, look, we know, it, it's almost like as if you wrote a zero in for your whole number, but we don't have to do that, okay? So I'm gonna erase that, because we don't have to do that. We just have to find out what our fraction is pointing to for A. So again, we're gonna count our sections. So we have, one, two, three, four sections that it's cut into. So we know our denominator tells us the number of pieces that it's cut into. In this case is a four. And then our numerator, we have to find how, how far are we past, so we have zero and we're at one. So one fourth, so this is cut into fourths. So it would be one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four-fourths or one whole, okay? So A is at one-fourth. Now let's look at B. And let's look at B is past one on the number line, headed toward two. But B has not made it to two yet. So our whole number that B has made it past is one whole number and then some fraction here for our mixed number. So now we have to figure out how many pieces is it cut into? Well, we count one section, two sections, three sections, four sections. So it's cut into four pieces. That becomes our denominator, or four sections. Now we have to figure out what is part B, point B. What is B pointing to? Excuse me. So we count. We know it's in fourths. So one, two, three fourths. So our mixed number is one and three fourths. Okay, let's come over here to this example and look at it. Where is C on our number line? Well, we see that C is located between five and six, but C hasn't made it over here all the way to six yet. It's less than six and greater than five, so our whole number for C is gonna be five because it's past five, so we can write down our five the next piece we have to figure out is how many sections or pieces is it cut into? So we have one, two, three, four, five pieces between five and six. So that becomes your denominator. Again, one, two, three, four, five pieces. Now, which one is C pointing to? One, two, three, four. So it's at five and four fifths. That is the mixed number that represents where C is on the number line. Okay, and number six. I mean, letter D, excuse me, I saw the six here. So we look at letter D to see what point it is on the number line and we say, okay, it's somewhere between six and seven, but it hasn't made it all the way over here to seven yet. So our whole number is gonna be a six 
and then we have to look at, and it's probably cut into fifths, but we should always double check because it's on the same number line. Should be cut into fifths, but let's double check. So we have one, two, three, four, five. It is good. So we know our denominator is a five, and we count to see which part of that five. So it is at one. So six and one fifth. Okay. Now you can use that to compare your fractions. You can use the number lines also to compare your fractions. Let me zoom this in a little bit. There we go. So we show two number lines up here. On one number line, the fraction 2 thirds is right there, graphed between zero and one. As you see, it hasn't made it all the way to the whole number one yet. So you don't have a mixed number. You simply have a fraction. It's less than one. On the other line, three fourths is graphed, which you can look at and see. Same thing. It has not made it all the way to one. So there's no whole number. It's just a fraction. So you look at these two and you can compare to see which one's larger. You can say, you know, and when we compare, we have to remember our options are less than, greater than, or equal to. Those are our three options when we're comparing these numbers. So you see it sets up our circle, two thirds compared to three fourths. And what do we see? We see that two thirds is actually less than three fourths when we compare them on the number line. Okay, so your practice problems are located on this page. I'm on page 186. Down here at the bottom, you can see you have A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So A, B, C, and D, you're going to go through and you're going to cover up and look where it's located on the number line and how many sections or tick marks are between each number. And so you're gonna name either the fraction, in this case, it hasn't made it all the way to one yet, so it's gonna be a fraction, or mixed number, in this case of B, it's made it past one, so you're gonna have a mixed number. You're gonna have the whole number of one plus of some fraction between one and two, okay? So you're gonna name either the fraction or the mixed number for each of these spots on the number line. Then down here, the fractions are graphed on this number line. You see between zero and one, none of these points have made it to one yet. They're all less than one, so they're fractions, not mixed numbers. So you're gonna look at those fractions graphed on the number line below, and then you're gonna do your comparisons. You're gonna look at one third, and you're gonna look at one half, and you're gonna say one third is, and it's either gonna be less than, greater than, or equal to one half, okay? And answer those. So A through G on page 186 for lesson 38. And that will complete the videos for Monday. There'll be more videos for Thursday. Be sure that um, you follow along with your weekly assignment page, which is located in your binder and tells you what to do each day. It tells you what time test to take. It tells you um, what lessons either I'm going to teach you on a YouTube video or uh, what you'll need to do as homework. And it also um, will lay out your whole week for you until we can be back together on the 19th. Have a good week, guys.